For the last couple of questions, I'm going to get you to do that thing that political scientists and IR folk hate to do, which is to predict the future. Um, so yeah. I'm going to ask you firstly, what kinds of things should we be looking out for and what kinds of things should my American foreign policy students be looking out for in the campaign as it draws to a close on 6th of November? Yeah. Well, one of the great things that I mentioned before is that the, net, the third debate is on foreign policy yeah. on the 22nd. Um, and I don't know, again, how much of it will be because the candidates yeah. might try to drag uh, the thing off topic. Um, but that, you know, we should get a, a better idea of, of, of some of the, the clarity to some of their issues. A co colleague of mine here was mentioning the other day that he was doing some research on the websites of the presidential campaigns. Now, these are presidential campaigns. And that the Romney website really didn't even talk very much about foreign policy until the last six to eight weeks, as you mentioned, as, yeah. um, in the aftermath of Benghazi, where they saw yeah. perhaps there was some mileage in, a, in, in it. So um, we, we might be, one of the good things is that the debate and perhaps um, some other issues, if, if, if they're pushed to take positions on, on the campaign stump, or if you know, there is something that in the news that occurs, we might get a little bit more clarity um, on foreign policy issues. So that's one thing to watch for. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the other thing is um, maybe we'll get a little bit more sort of explanation of what happened uh, or what the, 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 was the administration's real position after what happened in Benghazi. Um, you know, the president really hasn't addressed it. I mean, yeah. he's just sort of let it sort of fester there. The only person who's really sort of stepped forward is Secretary of State Clinton. Yeah, well, did, you, did you see that as being a wise move on her part? It seemed risky uh, from this no, I think I think it's a good move I mean she took one for the team okay you know I my sense is that this is going to be in people will forget about this issue um, but they might remember her, her loyalty to to the to the president and you know she's she's uh, stepping out um, from the position yeah. there'll be a new secretary of state if they're well regardless of whether Obama or Romney wins and you know to leave on that um, uh, no, um, when, you know, all the way along in the past few year, years, people have liked to talk about tensions between the Clintons and Obama. Um, yeah. This is a way to say, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not there. Yeah. So on foreign policy, I think those are the, the sort of things to look for in the, in the last couple of weeks. Sure. And then what was your second part of the question? I can't remember what the second part was. It's yet to be asked, and it's the one that oh. you probably expect to come, which is... Uh, if you're going to get the crystal ball out and look to the future and predict how things are going to go on the 6th of November, how do you expect things to play out? Who do you think is going to win? Well, you know, um, I kind of sometimes like to gamble a little bit. And um, in a two-horse race where, where both the candidates are, are very evenly matched, you're not going to get very good odds on either one. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and it's difficult to tell. Um, it really is a very close election. It reminds me a great deal of 2004. In fact, funny enough, in 2000, I think many of us weren't expecting it. We, could, we didn't believe presidential elections could be that close. Yeah. Yeah. And so in 2004, having experienced 2000, and, and, and in 2004 the polls were very much like they are now, with sort of uh, obviously a, a Republican incumbent president instead of a Democratic one. Yeah. Um, there was a real sense that uh, this is going to be very, very close, and no one wanted to say who was winning. I did a lot of media in the early evening, and you know, a lot of the exit polls were coming in. They would look very good for Kira. Yeah. Um, and I, I sense we're going to have that kind of night. So, if I wanted to pick a really sort of interesting uh, uh, prediction, um, and I've seen some computer sim simulations yeah. based upon polling data that give this about a twenty to one shot, but I think it it could plausibly happen is that Obama wins the electoral vote and Romney wins the popular vote, a sort of reverse of 2000. Um, because if you look at the state-by-state -state stuff, and we mentioned this with the battleground states, um, and, and there is a, a significant amount of discontent out there with Obama, and in some of the solidly um, democratic states, his margins of victory, he's going to win those states, but his margins of victory aren't, as it, aren't uh, particularly impressive. Yeah. In the solid Republican states, Romney's going to win very, very easily. Yeah. And, it, 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 you know, that outcome, uh, you know, I, I give it, as I said, a 20 to 1 chance. But I think that's a kind of interesting thing to, to, to at least hang your hat on and look for yeah. on November the 6th, um, as opposed to just, you know, 
who's going to win. You could almost flip a coin there at this point on, on that. It's it's very exciting though, and and there is a real sense here um, that this is you know you can see people are kind of energized or nervous. Um, there is a real sense of uncertainty in the outcome here. Thanks very much for spending your time talking to me, and I will use this for teaching purposes for uh, my American foreign policy classes. A couple of NCSU students in there as well. I'm yeah, sure right. they'll appreciate it.